one question has already come in. I was thinking about the story of Gotama's pre-Buddha life. Something in this story struck me I hadn't really considered before. Gotama goes to two meditation teachers and learns deep concentration states, but conclude that this is not the path to awakening. So goes off to try something else. After experiencing with asceticism, he has a spontaneous memory of doing something, doing deep concentration as a child. I wouldn't call it a spontaneous memory. He decides that the asceticism isn't work and working and he's looking to find something else. So he's sort of searching. And then that's when he remembers uh, the concentration, the first jhana as a child, and then concludes that this is, in fact, the path to awakening. What changed? I think what changed was he realized that the jhanas were not the end of the path, which is what his two teachers apparently were teaching. Uh, you get to seventh jhana, the realm of no thingness, and yeah, it's done. No dukkha there. Of course, he's like, yeah, man, but when you come out, there's still dukkha. This ain't working. Same thing with the second teacher in the eighth jhana. Now, when he thinks back, all right, these jhanas aren't involved with sensuality, so I don't need to be afraid of the pleasure of the first jhana, but could they be used in another way, not as the goal of practice, but as simply a means to arrive at the goal of practice? Uh, and so then he starts combining the jhanas an insight practice. He runs the jhanas, and then depending on which sutta you're looking at, he remembers past lives, sees beings passing away and re-arising according to their karma, formulates the Four Noble Truths, but there are other suttas, which I think are probably more reliable, where he spends the time contemplating dependent origination, coming up with the teaching on dependent origination. So I think it was this breakthrough to realize that the jhanas are preliminary practice, not the goal of practice. Uh, the, these states are useful in that afterwards your insight practice is going to work much better, but yeah, not the goal of practice. As an aside, I also found it interesting that in Majjhima 26, where the part of the story is about how God Gotama found the Arupas unsatisfactory. The specific practice that the Buddha recommends at the end of the sutta is actually to go through the jhanas and the Arupas all the way to cessation of feeling and perception. Then on that basis, destroying the taints, the asavas, through wisdom. I wonder if the discourse was addressed to a group of monastics, particularly skilled in high concentration. So the Buddha wanted to start by saying just concentrating on its own isn't enough, but then with close with, and here's how you use your existing skills to go the extra mile and wake up. This does sound like what the sutta is actually saying. Concentration by itself isn't enough, but you do the through wisdom bit at the end. And that's what's going to enable you to wake up. Now, doing a little bit of Sutta archaeology, Majjhima 26 seems to be two stories that are put together. The first one is the Buddha's awakening. And then the second one uh, about going through all of the jhanas, including the Arupas, to the cessation of feeling and perception appears to me to be later material that was tacked on to the end of this particular sutta, but that's just my best guess. Uh, but it is clear that the whole thrust of the sutta is, uh, well, concentration by itself is not going to get you there, but concentration coupled with wisdom is what it's all about.